While Stephen's at the pinnacle of his career, this lady is reaching the twilight of hers. Everyone knows Belle Crockford in rowing. She's been a constant thorn on the side of the rowing authorities for a long time. Uh, what's got me rattled recently is that I've been forced into a situation where in order to compete for the Commonwealth Games and to represent my country at the World Rowing Championships um, in three weeks' time, I had to actually give up my job as a PE teacher and further education lecturer. And um, I'm <laughs> up to here in debt. <laughs> um, I have my own boat. Um, I'm sponsoring myself totally and there is a very small grant from the Sports Aid Foundation which only covers the first 10 feet of my 30 foot boat. Are you saying Bill that the only way you could have competed in this was actually to resign your job? I mean did you have to go that far? If I want to turn in a good performance and I, I like to do my best and I think this country expects their athletes to do their best, yes I had actually no choice. Um, medals do not come cheap. They are very expensive, not just in terms of hours and giving up a social life, whatever that is, but also in terms of pure hired finance. This may be Beryl's swan song as far as the games go, but as world champion in the double skulls, she's going to go out the way she came in, living up to the title on her sweater. Well, I'd like to make a few waves. <laughs> now, if I said Gibraltar, you'd probably think of holiday brooches and suntans, but how about rowing? And Gibraltar bringing up the rear of the field quite some long way behind. Well, there's still a long way for Gibraltar to go. They're not going to do anything but take last place in this. But you've got to give this crew from Gibraltar a bit of credit. They're certainly sticking to it well at the back of the field. But don't be fooled by that. Gibraltar have made rock-solid friends down at Strathclyde Park with their determination and effort. But what's the training like in Gibraltar? Well, um, you've got to adapt yourself to when the tide's coming in and when the tide's going out and what time the wind's not blowing and you it's very much uh, you've got to keep your eye out on the window see when it's flat and when it's flat you just run down the club and make a phone call and get out also we've got to sort of um, hide behind tankers and behind jetties to get the calmer stretches of water well no tankers at Strathclyde but a lot of tough competition Scotland and Canada disputing the lead Wales and Gibraltar back down the course. Uh, the pair from Gibraltar just going past the halfway mark. They finished last, but no one's downhearted. The games need teams like Gibraltar. Well, we're using this mainly as experience because we haven't had uh, much international competition before. But uh, we're just uh, really gauging ourselves against the, the big guys of the sports, really. Are you enjoying it, though? It's great fun. Gibraltar won't win any medals, but as half their entire games team are involved in the rowing, they'll learn from this experience, even if the public address announcer might have to wait for his tea. Well behind, and even further behind at Gibraltar. ...this afternoon. And reinforcements arriving for Steve Redgrave and Andy Holmes. They go in the coxed pause this afternoon. Variety seems to be the spice of life for this man. Well, this year I have been doing lots of uh, different boats. Um, I think it's about five or six different boats I've actually raced in international regattas this year. Um, they're all demanding in different sort of ways. Um, the Cox Pair, which is the boat we'll be doing at the World Championships, is um, not so much on the lungs, but very much harder on the legs. Mm. And because you're carrying a Cox, and there's only two of you carrying him, it's a lot heavier load to carry each time. Um, the Cox, this pair, is... Um, a lot livelier boat, um, you're more chasing it, uh, trying to keep up with it than actually being on top of it and driving it through. And the single skull is uh, probably a bit of both through. Well Stephen appears to have got the Midas touch all right and a handful of medals could come his way. It will also be a very busy time for him. In the Coxless pairs for example, England look very strong and they cruise to an easy and undemanding win in the heats. Yes, Sorry, Councillor, indeed. Right. Yeah, Not right. easy than I thought it was going to be. Just get ready for the four now. We've got about half an hour's rest before we're out again. It was a similar story in the Coxed Fours. Redgrave is on course to taking these games by...